Lakshman Akuthan here. He's co-founder of the Economic Cycle Research Institute. He correctly predicted the recession, the recovery, and the recent slowdown. And in fact, uh, Lakshman, even before, uh, yeah. even before any of this soft patch stuff, people say transitory because of Japan and a number of other reasons. But actually, before that, you were saying we're in, we're in trouble. Yeah, it, by the beginning of this year. Uh, we were seeing in our longer leading indicators of global industrial growth very clear synchronized downturn uh, and then by the spring that had easily spread to the U.S. broad U.S. downturn and the the earlier call is before the earthquake in Japan uh, so there's a cyclical uh, under uh, uh, foundation underneath this slowdown and perhaps even that's why the markets the debt markets aren't uh, freaking out a bit more because they're also wrestling with the reality that the fundamental economy uh, is already slowing in a cyclical fashion uh, despite Japan Shouldn't and that despite, make it worse though? Like, I mean, if, you're, well, if you get kicked when you're down, that's got to be worse than kicked when you're standing up. Well, there's a couple markets here, but, but uh, the, the bond market, right? So they're concerned about inflation, right? If we're going to devalue the currency, the currency's riskier, we're going to print more money, all of those things. But if there's a sustained slowdown again, uh, that's very, uh, it's a difficult environment for inflation to really take hold and take off. And so your inflation expectations you're seeing are, are easing off in the wake of good leading indicators of inflation. So they're wrestling with a couple of things here. And if you're in a slowdown already and you have negative shocks, uh, you know, foreseen or unforeseen, uh, these uh, can only make things a bit worse. And Lizzie, I mean, tons of wrangling. We still essentially have two plans on two completely separate at least, tracks. At least two plans. At least right? two plans. Yeah. Right. Well, at, at this point, we have the two official plans, the, the one that uh, Speaker Boehner is backing, which is sort of the, the two potential hikes there to the debt ceiling. They would have to be two votes, a commission there. And then a, a slightly larger one, if you look at the top line numbers from Harry Reid, the Senate Majority Leader, the President threw his weight behind Reid's last night, although we should note in his speech he did talk about revenue increases, which aren't in either of the plans. Those are both all-cut plans. And you had these sort of dueling visions, certainly the president coming out there saying, look, this could be bad, trying to make a case he's been making to those of us who's been pay who've been paying very close attention, but I don't think the general public was seeing that. I, I want to, can we play one part of what the president was saying to try to get that message across? It's a dangerous game that we've never played before, and we can't afford to play it now. Not when the jobs and livelihoods of so many families are at stake. We can't allow the American people to become collateral damage to Washington's political warfare. But you know, when you, when you saw the reactions, the president saying political warfare, people who thought the president was on the wrong track still think the president's on the wrong track. People who thought Boehner was on the wrong track still think that. Yeah. Uh, why aren't we seeing more worry yet? Because obviously there could be tremendous economic consequences if we actually not just default, but get to that 11th hour moment. Well, I think uh, up until maybe today, <laughs> we've seen a lot of uh, Wall Street and Main Street uh, forecast, mainstream forecasters saying, hey, there's going to be a second half rebound. Uh, and they've been trying to hold that position uh, for a while. And the data coming in uh, as Japan has come back online has kind of supported that. You get a little bit of a dead cat bounce, I've been calling it, off of the data, uh, the manufacturing data. And until recently, people have been holding out hope of a second half rebound. That's evaporating. You're seeing that evaporate, uh, maybe in the context of the broader discussion about the economy. And then maybe I think things come to a head. Uh, I mean, we'll see what happens here, how much people are feeling the pressure. At this moment, obviously, we have an enormous federal deficit. At this yep, moment, yep. are we in such a fragile place, though, when you look at the amount of spending that's going into the economy, how much of that has been coming from the federal government, certainly in states, if you enact those cuts that would be needed to balance the, the real fiscal book, what kind of short-term harm could you be doing to the economy? That They can't well, seem to get this straight in Washington, but obviously it's well, a worry. Well, quite a lot. Uh, if, we, if we're already in a cyclical downturn, and, and the key point being there's no upturn in sight, right? The forward-looking indicators, which are anticipating this, have not turned up. If we were in an upswing, then uh, doing some of these things, like if you wanted to hike taxes or if you wanted to cut spending, it wouldn't derail. Uh, anything. It wouldn't say, oh, now now we're really at risk. We don't. We might go over a cliff. Your, your hand, analogy of a standing man who gets punched yeah, is well, a good one. 
you maybe you can take it and stay standing. But if you're falling and if someone pushes you from behind, and someone gives you a shove, then you're gonna you're gonna end up splat on the floor. And that's I think an increasing risk if you're already in a cyclical downturn uh, and you have more negatives weighing on top uh, wherever they're coming from. Uh, that's a big risk. Certainly, debt to GDP ratios now are about 100% for the U.S. Very problematic. It's going to for for any kind of long-term growth, healthy growth. Uh, it's going to be very sluggish. A lot of work has been done on that. We're not alone. Look around the country. Uh, uh, excuse me, around the world. A lot of countries are like this. And even if you look at, say, the shining stars, the past year, Europe, the core of Europe has been growing uh, well above trend. Uh, Germany, I think everybody looks at it and says, oh, look, they're, go they're doing so well. Last year, with this above trend growth in Germany, uh, they saw their debt to GDP ratio rise, not fall. Uh, and I have news, you know, they're slowing now. So it's going to get worse. They're already in the mid 80s. It's going to approach this kind of 90% threshold. We're already past it. Uh, so we've got sluggish growth as it is. The question is, if you, 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 you want to, in the long term, or the medium term even, balance uh, the budget and bring down the debt, in the short term, if you're going down and you uh, have something worse than a slowdown, yeah, it could cost you a lot more. You expect a slowing in the second half of the year, maybe even carrying over into the next year. Yeah. But when we look at corporate profits, this is, as many people point out, a bright spot that maybe we've all been missing, that we're too pessimistic. More than 30% of the companies in the S&P 500 have reported so far, more than 80% have exceeded Wall Street's expectations. So if corporate profits look so good, how come you expect slowing? Okay, there's all, there's, it's all about timing is the, is kind of the umbrella statement on. As in all on, with life, right? as all, as And in expectations all as well, right? Well, in forward-looking expectations. So um, we have a good Q2 in corporate profits, uh, which had followed some earlier good uh, profits gains uh, out of uh, corporate America. First, let's step back and look at the big picture. Uh, GDP uh, has, is now bigger than it was prior to the recession. However, that's all being produced with 7 million less people. So that produces a big hunk of cash for corporate America, which they have. And that's supporting uh, part of the support uh, for the share prices. Um, also, when you think about why aren't they spending that, because there's a big question. There's a roughly a trillion dollars yeah, I mean, sitting there. And we've seen some M&A, so we do see some companies of putting that money to work. We have seen some buybacks. We've even seen some companies raise their dividends. So some but, selective companies are but using rel it. Relative to the trillion dollars that's there, it's still, it's still pretty small. And so why isn't it coming back? The primary reason is because you're in a slowdown. Uh, and the forward look, uh, I think, uh, regardless of the headlines, is not as rosy. Uh, as uh, some might believe. And so do when you mean you, by that that, I don't know, a CEO is going to wait to hire people because he or she isn't sure what the economy is going to bring and then that's just going to have this cyclical effect? Well, first, you have a lot of muscle memory from the Great Recession and then the double dip scare of last year, uh, which will reemerge this summer. Okay, that's going to happen. So you say a double dip is coming? I think a double dip scare is definitely coming. Uh, I can't say a new recession uh, is, is baked in the cake yet, but I think the double dip scare is you're going, you're, it's absolutely going to be part of the discussion all summer long. I want, and I want that, holds, that holds the spending of that money, right? You're not going to spend your money. If, if you're, you're a business scared. manager, if you're scared or unless business is beating down your door, and it is not, regardless uh, of what people are saying, it's not beating down the door. I want to point out we talk also all the time about companies that beat, you know, the percentage of companies that yeah. beat expectations, 83% uh, I think we are uh, looking at right now, but that doesn't mean that they're doing better, right? Because I'm just looking at the Bloomberg here, uh, 751 companies that reported out of 5447. Profit growth is 16%. Now, if you look at it for last quarter, it was 26 and change. No, right. So, you now so they're beating expectations, sure, but they're not growing nearly as quickly. Well, there's two things. So you're keying in on something that's very important, which is profits growth is the driver of the business cycle, not profits. Uh, it's the rate of change of the profits. And so here you see a, de uh, a deceleration that's completely consistent with our outlook of a slowdown. And also think about, th this is backward looking. Uh, when you're reporting earnings for Q2 or for the first half of the year, hey, that was during a revival. There was a revival in growth from the end of 2010 through somewhere in the second quarter. And so I, I hope you made more money because that's when you're supposed to make more money. But, but uh, if you look at the economy, uh, it is slowing and you're, it's going to be, that's a lot more headwinds regardless of Japan or the debt or budget talks.